Welcome back design students. In this video we're going to complete the construction of our barrel texture and we're also going to generate a normal map. So as you can see I've been at work on this thing and I've done a few things. I've actually completed the um, barrel top texture here and I'm going to show you how I did that. I don't want to make you uh, watch me do that. And um, I also added some color correction to it to make it match more closely these boards. Uh, another thing that I did was that I disassembled the um, plank texture that I used. I cut the boards, I cut each individual board out so it would match the geometry of the mesh that I laid out here. Because I noticed when I applied the texture in Maya, the barrel tops didn't match the board ends. And they still don't totally, but they're closer than they were. The boards were much wider. They came up over here and just didn't look right. So I cut each individual board out using selections and reassembled this. And I can show you basically how I did that as well. So let's get started. So let me first show you how I fixed this. Um, here is the original plank texture that I used. And if you recall, what I did before is I simply used uh, free transform to stretch it out like that. So what I ended up doing later on is that I used my marquee selection tool and I just simply selected each board like so and I copy and paste it and then I move it out and then I put it up here so that it sort of matched each board and then I would transform it like so so that it matched the width of the mesh. And then I would simply do the next board, like so. And notice it's not t it's telling me I didn't have any pixels selected. That's because I was on this layer, not this layer. And here's the next board. And it would snap into the place like that. And then use free transform to make the width right. And so I would I assembled all these like this. And then when I got one section. I selected all of those layers like this and merged them by right clicking and selecting merge layers. So now I have one layer and this is one object that can be transformed and copied. So I assembled the section and I copied it just like I did before. So that's how I fixed oops, sorry. So that's how I fixed that problem. The way I did these is, and let me turn off one of them so I can show you how I did this, is that I grabbed this particular board texture so I have some sawed board ends. And I select all again, copy, paste, bring it in, and then I zoomed in a little bit. And then I used my marquee select tool to select a board end like so and then copy and paste, get my move tool, move that new piece out, put it over here, zoom in some more, and then I used free transform to rotate it, put it into place, and then I grab this and simply, oops, hold down alt so it stays in place and I scale it up a little bit like that. Then to get rid of these pieces, I use the polygonal select tool, which is this one here. It's under your lasso tool. And what this does is it allows you to click and then move your mouse and draw in a very straight line so that you can cut that angular piece like that. Now to delete the parts I don't want, which are the ends, I need to go to select inverse and then I can delete the ends. Then you hit Command D to deselect, and that can be found here as well. And then you just keep going along like that, and you end up with a piece that looks like this. Now, this one is the same as this one. I just, after I finished this one, I copied it. I merged all the little pieces, because you're going to end up with a whole bunch of little pieces like this. And I merged them into one layer. Oops, that's the wrong one. But I merged them into one layer, like so, 
And then I simply duplicated that layer and moved it over here. This is on the bottom, so it really doesn't matter if it's the same. Now I know this is tedious, but it's what you got to do. You can copy these if you need to. You just simply get your select tool, select one, command C, command V, and then move it over, hit free transform and rotate it and put it into place. You just don't want the same ones next to each other. But this one could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be like this, it could be every fifth one or something, and then you get another one and you can do the same thing. So after you do that, to do the color matching part, what you do is, I used several things. I used layer styles to use a color overlay. And to apply a layer style, you simply click, double click on the layer, like so, and that brings up layer styles. And I used a color overlay. And when you select color overlay, you get a swatch. And when you click the swatch, you can use your eyedropper tool to sample one of these colors. And that's what I did. And then I changed the blending mode to multiply. I just played around with the blending modes to get one I liked and played around with the opacity until I got something that was kind of close to this. That's the first thing I did. The second thing I did was I went to image adjustments and I played around with the levels and the hue saturation to sort of get this to match as closely as I could to that. And let me show you what that looks like. In adjustments, what Levels does is it allows you to use the, to play with the blacks and the grays and the midtones to get a really nice color match. And actually, I think that looks better than what I had. Let's adjust this one as well. And then you could also use the hue saturation here which allows you, oops, sorry, which allows you to sort of desaturate, and I'm working on this one here on the right, to desaturate the thing, and you can also desaturate any one color here, like the reds, like I can turn the reds down and get it a little more washed out, see? There's, so you play around with that and get that like you want. And those are the two that I used to accomplish my color matching. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete this layer since we don't want it anymore. The last thing you need to do before you render this texture out is you need to put a color layer at the very bottom so that if you have any gaps in your texture, they won't stand out and be black or white or something. So to do that, you simply create a layer at the bottom like this. And then you get your eyedropper tool and you sample one of these colors like so and that will create a color swatch over here. And then you simply use your Alt-Delete shortcut to fill that layer. And as you can see, there it is right there. I filled it with that color. That fills with the foreground color. And that's what it looks like. You can see there's the one and there's another one. Once you've done that, then of course you're going to turn these two off, the top two off, and export it again as we've done before. Overwrite your other texture, return to Maya, and reload the texture. And you should have something that looks like that. Once you get that done, then you can generate the normal map. To generate the normal map, you need to do a few things. First thing you need to do is save your Photoshop file. You should always save your Photoshop file and preserve it so you can come back and adjust it later if you want to with your layers intact. To create the normal map, what you need to do is select all your layers and merge them so everything is one thing. Then you go to Filter, 3D, Generate, Normal Map. And you will end up with something that looks like this. And this is going to give us depth. You can play around with this a little bit. You might need to invert the height, but as you can see, that doesn't work for me because now these are in instead of out. We want them to be out. And it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to look pretty good. You can also play around with the detail scale and the blur. And um, 
these colors. You can raise these or lower these to get these like you want. This is a preview here. It doesn't work terribly well. But once you get that done, you click OK, and you will have a normal map, which you then export the same way you do your albedo map. Only this one, you're going to rename, instead of UV, you're going to rename this NML for normal. And you can see here's mine right here. And then you're going to return to Maya. And you're going to go back to your texture here, your material. And you're going to scroll down and find geometry. Open that up and click the bump mapping uh, button here. There'll be a checkerboard like this. I've already applied mine. Click that. Click the little folder just like you do for your color texture. Open that up and it will be applied. And then and to adjust it, you need to go back one level, which is this button here, and you need to adjust the bump height here. Bump depth. You can see as I go this way, it changes the way it looks. You don't want it to be too much. Once you get that done, you need to return to Photoshop and undo all of this. Just hit Command-Z to undo that layer merging so that you can preserve your layers. Save your Photoshop file and keep it in your Images folder in your Project folder so that you can preserve the Photoshop file that you worked with. To set up the render in Maya, you should know what to do by now. You make a plane Here's my plane. I just created a plane and scaled it out. Then you add an Arnold Sky Dome light. And you go to the rendering tab and add a directional light and adjust it so that you get the shadows you want. And remember to do that, you rotate it. You can see as I rotate it here, I get different shadow directions. Once you've got your light set up, when you're ready to render, you need to switch to the rendering menu. Remember, you do that right here. And then you need to go to Render, Render Settings. Make sure you have the Arnold Renderer selected. Make sure that you are rendering a JPEG in your file output here. And then come down here under Image Size and change from 540 to 720. And click OK. Then you can render by clicking this button right here, and that will render the current frame. Once that render is complete, if it does this, do it again, but once that, until it doesn't do that anymore. Once the render is complete, go to File, Save Image, name it, save it as a JPEG, and turn it into this assignment. So that's how you create a texture in Photoshop for a simple barrel. I'm sure we'll be doing this again, and I will see you in the next video.